We're going to study the Word of God. And I'm going to be beginning from the Gospel of John chapter 1. And if you want to write a, you know, a topic or a theme or adding or a title, you want a title today, you can title it The Beginning. You can title it The Beginning. Okay? The Beginning. Why study the Gospel of John? Because in the, in the next Wednesdays, I will continue uh, discussing and teaching from the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is a special Gospel. You see, uh, when you go to college, you study what they call the Synoptic Gospels. And they include the Gospel of John in the Synoptic Gospel study. Now, John is different from the others. Synoptic comes from, you know, the synopsis. Uh, it's like having the same idea, you know, uh, together. They kind of, they're they writing the same idea. They, they, they narrate, they tell the story. They tell the story of Jesus. But John is very different. And that's why when a believer, when somebody becomes a new believer, we advise them, go and read the book of John. Why do we do that? John is very deliberate. He chooses what he writes in his book. He is very deliberate. There are words you will see, like the word believing or believe. That word, I went through the Strong's Congress and I found that the word believe appears in one, the Gospel of John 98 times, maybe a little more than that. This is the King James, the old King James, the 1600, uh, you know, uh, manuscript, King James, the original, 1611. There are 98 times the word believe, believing, believeth, believest thou, it appears 98 times times in one gospel and like the others John interprets Jesus Christ John interprets Jesus Christ these are introductory remarks that I'm making here John interprets while the others they narrate he went here he did this he went there he did this a John will will select an act either a miracle something that happened and he will he is so selective and we'll come to that he's so selective he will select seven of them instead of writing all the miracles and and in and, and the gospel of john he tells us why he writes it first of all i want you to know matthew the gospel of matthew and those of you that are watching the KTN these days, they are running the series, uh, Jesus. They're, they're running a movie about Jesus. And, and I like to watch that. Because there are things in that movie that really displays that, that are not really written uh, in the Gospels. And, and, and one thing that I see the disciples and the people around Jesus is struggling to believe that Jesus is the Messiah that Jesus might be one of the characters. When I visited Israel a year ago, the guy, Malcolm, who was our tour guide, I asked him about Jesus. And he has no problem in believing that, you know, uh, Jesus was, Jesus is the one written in the Bible and all that, but he doesn't believe that he's the Messiah. He, because he told me, you see, during the same time, there were so many people known as Jesus or Christ. There were many that were known as Jesus during his time, either before or after or during. And he ran me through a list of, was it 12 or 13 different ones? And I thought, yeah, if in Kenya we had about five people, each one of them claiming to be Jesus, I would have a problem. I would have a problem picking out who is really the Messiah. And this is one difficult that people during that time 
you know, heard. Even though they saw the miracles that Jesus did, they still said there are other guys there who are doing miracles. So what made Jesus the Messiah? Jesus, the Christ in Greek, the Christ in Greek, and I'll come to that, the languages that were being used at the time, Christ the Greek and the Messiah, hmm? the Messiah. The, the, the Christ is in Greek, while the Messiah is Hebrew, and both of them mean the anointed one. The anointed one. The chosen one, the anointed one. Of course, there are others who claim to be anointed during that time. There are others who claim to be anointed. So Matthew, let's begin from Matthew, if you're writing. Matthew is writing in his mind, is looking at the Jews. And his writing, he imagines it's going to be read by the Jewish people, the Israelis, the Jews. And so Matthew, as he writes, he will quote the Old Testament. Either it is written, or this one was said, and he will come all the way. He has the lineages that most of the others don't give. The lineage from all out there, you know, and so and so, both so and so and so and so which you don't find in other Gospels. So Matthew is in his mind writing to the Jew. He wants to tell the Jew that Jesus, who was born of a virgin, virgin woman, is the Christ. How about Mark? Mark is very interesting. Mark, if you look at the, the book of Mark, Mark is simply, uh, is focusing his mind and his focus is on the Romans, soldiers, kind of the military. And you will feel that as you read the Gospel of Luke. I mean, Mark, there is a lot of end, 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 end. If you go to the Gospel of Mark and you, beginning, you, know, you begin from uh, chapter, chapter 1, in fact, he will begin a chapter with end, end. Uh, I'm looking at Mark right now. Let me just look at, uh, you, uh, you know, from the beginning here. There are several chapters you will begin with and, and, A-N-D, and, and. And his sentences have a lot of and. He is talking to people who are in a hurry. You know when you're talking and you put and, and you speak a little bit of and, you don't want to finish because this person is in a hurry. Mark chapter 2 begins with and again. Chapter 3, and he entered. Chapter 4, Mark, I'm looking at Mark. And he began. I'm just looking at the beginning. Chapter 5, and they came over. Did you ever imagine that? Did you ever imagine that? Chapter 6, Mark is still, he's telling us, you know, the story of Jesus very quickly to people who are in a hurry. Chapter 6, and he went out. Is there another one? 9, is it 9, and... And he said unto them, and then ten, and he arose, uh, and eleven, and when they came, and chapter twelve, my goodness, and he began. This is the beginning of a chapter, chapter thirteen. And as he went out, any other? Oh yeah, the rest are and, 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 and. The rest are and, 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 and. Okay, my goodness. So Mark is writing to probably his viewership. Uh, the Romans people who are in a hurry. They were the people that were ruling during this time of Jesus. They were the people who ruled Palestine. And the, so the Jewish people were under a, a, an overseas rulership. The Romans. Before the Romans, there were the Greek now, the Greek, while they were there, the Greek, like Kenya, we were under the, the colonial rulers, the British, for many, many years. So, being under the British, they left to us their culture, their culture, their way of life, like English. I wasn't born English. 
but I learned English because the British people, among the things they left for us is their language and their customs. Let me go back to the uh, Middle East, the Israelis. The Greeks left them with their language, the Greek, and other, other customs, other customs. So a lot of write-up during this time was being written in Greek, was being written in Greek. So Greek had been left to the Israelis and the Jews and the people around there. And that's why the Bible comes, you know, the, the, the originals come to us in Greek and then they translated it into English. So let's look at, um, let's look at John chapter 1 so that you don't get lost. John chapter 1. Did I tell you that Luke was writing to someone called Theophilus? Luke is writing to someone called Theophilus. Even the Acts of the Apostles that later on he's writing, he's writing to Theophilus. Theophilus is somebody, I, I, I guess a leader, uh, and I, I'll tell you that next time we are studying, Theophilus. But John and Luke, let me go back, Luke uses very medical, medical language. In fact, the sicknesses, the illnesses, he calls them by the real medical terms. Okay? Look, because he was a medical doctor. John. John writes to everybody. John writes to everybody. And the theme for the gospel of John is, and I want us to learn that before we begin John chapter 1. And we just, today we just go over such, you know, several verses. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Now when you say that in English. It seems that there was a beginning with this. In the beginning was the word. Which beginning was that? Now, the English person lacks a better word to use because if you go now to the original, the Greek, there's a word used there, infinite, that God is infinite. God had no beginning. Creation of the world had a beginning. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created. The world, the creation had a beginning. But the existence of this word did not have a beginning. There is a Greek word that, 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 that is there called in, in, double E-N, infinite. That there was no beginning with this word. The word was there. The word was there. So let's look at it again. In the beginning. So the in the infinite was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Wow. It was there. It was with. And it was, it was God. I'll jump quickly. Because I want to tell you why John is writing this gospel. I jump quickly to verse 14. And that word was made flesh. That word that was there in the beginning, that was there in the infinite, before anything was, it was there. That word that was with God and that was God, in verse 14, John says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is powerful, my friends. That is real powerful. And the word, that which was, you know, John in the beginning, he says it was in the beginning. That one that was with God, that word that was God, stepped out and became flesh. John writes and discusses the divinity of Christ. 
unlike the other synoptic writers, he discusses the divinity. Do we, do we use a word divine? The divinity of Christ. Christ was a hundred percent God. Christ was a hundred percent a human being. Did you write that? Christ was both God and man. Verse 14. And that word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he says, we beheld, we saw. When he was just a word out there, we couldn't see him. We couldn't touch him. We couldn't feel him. But Jesus stepped through a virgin Mary, stepped out into the world and became flesh for nine months in a womb of a, of, of a Virgin Mary. He, was, he, he grew up to become a baby and was born after nine months in a major. John interprets rather than telling the story. He says, and the word became flesh. See, the others, if they were to write about the word, and none of them writes about the word, it's, it would have just said, in the beginning was the word, it was, you know, just tell a story. But John is so specific. Secondly, in the beginning, why is John writing the gospel of John? And I want you quickly to go to John chapter 20 and verse 31. John chapter 20 and verse 31. John chapter 20 and verse 31. 20 and 31. But, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. I like the King James Version. It says the, meaning there is no any other. While there are so many other Jesuses and Christ during that time, these are written. He's writing the Gospel of John. He's saying, these I am writing that ye might believe that Jesus the Christ. Go back to verse 30. He says, verse 30 says, and many other signs, and many other signs truly did, did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. In this book, the Gospel of John. And you can take it even in the Bible, they are not written. But selectively, John selects. So on many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But, These are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Christ in Greek, Jesus in Hebrew, you can go on. He is the Messiah. You will see that in the writings of John, the Messiah. He will, he will discuss that. And that's why we are studying the gospel of John. These are written. See, there are so many other. If books were to be written about the acts of Jesus. So anyway, many other signs were done that are not written here. These are written so that you may believe. And I told you, those of you that are just joining us right now, in the Gospel of June, John, the word believe, believing, believers, believest, appears 98 times, the word believe. So what is believing? What is believing? We will come to that. So let's go down. So that is the theme. I have given you the theme of the Gospel of John. If I ask you what is the theme of the Gospel of John, it is John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31. And many other signs did Jesus do in the midst of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe. 
Uh, that Jesus is the, the, meaning there is no any other. See, when somebody calls me the, the bishop, I say, uh, 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 there's another one. There are many others, bishops. See, in this block, in our offices here, for a number of years, I was the only, I was the only bishop. And so people would come and say, I want to see the bishop. There was no question about it. But later on, our church grew, and we have over 10, 12 bishops right now. And, and some of their offices are here. And so when somebody comes and says, I want to see the bishop, they ask you, which one? Which bishop? Because there are other bishops. These are written that you might, in case you have heard of other Jesus. <laughs> this is not the, the. Those are a Jesus. In fact, the word Jesus is used a lot as a name in South America, Central America, by the Spanish people. Jesus. I see players that are called Jesus. But these are written. And that's why we study. That's why we study the Gospel of John. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus, the Messiah, is the Son of God. And by believing, you may have life eternal. That's why John is writing this gospel. That's why we tell young believers, go and start reading from chapter 1 of the gospel of John. Let me go back there. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. An emphasis there. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Without him, nothing you see around hmm, would exist without him. He had to be there. That is Jesus Christ. He had to be there. It was made by him. God said, let us, let us, let us. He was there in the creation. He was there before the creation. Now, this is still the interpretation here. There's a lot of hermeneutics here. Those of you that are doing, uh, you're studying a course in the Bible school. This book is a must. This book is, is a must. Look at verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. In him was life. In Greek, in him was zoe. Z-O-E. Zoe. And I see people doing their lotions. Z-O-E. Zoe is the life of God. Zoe. Z-O-E. In him was zoe. This life is different from the physical life that you have right now. In him was eternal life. Eternal that never ends. It is from everlasting to everlasting. When you become a believer, when you come to Jesus and you give your life to Jesus and he gives you that life, that eternal life, everlasting life is yours. This is different from the physical life. Because I'm trying to explain to you, there were Anabaptists when they believed on Jesus Christ, they were literally ready to die like Jesus Christ. You know our faith today, our Christian faith today, there isn't that seriousness. There's, there isn't that commitment today now in our Christianity. Our Christianity is so cheap. When a Christian is suffering, mwingine anakuja kwambia, "Eh, you are a sinner. That's why you are suffering." You've not read the scriptures. They asked Jesus, "Uyo kwa nini ako mgonjwa? Why is this person is it the parents who sinned or it is him who sinned?" And Jesus says, "None. None of the above. None of the above." Now a lot of people will go through turmoil and challenges in life and they will think, "I must have done God something terrible. I'm paying for it." Ooh, that kind of a belief. No. 
So in Christ, verse 3 and 4, verse, verse 4, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. Light of men. Put that up. In him was life. Zoe. And the life was the light of men. You see, when, when you come to Christ as a, you know, as a sinner, as a sinner, you are dead in your trespasses. When you're not born again, you're, a, you're dead already. You're dead in your sins. You're a corpse that has only a physical life. You don't have the life of God. So when you come to Christ, the Bible says, because him, he has that life he gives to you, that life is the light of men. You get enlightened. So there is that physical life that we can miss it you know, during this time. But there is eternal life. There is eternal, eternal life. When you come to Christ, you get the light for life. Your thinking, your style, your everything. You get light, light. You get light. In verse 5 it says, and I think we should, in a few minutes we should be closing here. And the light shines in darkness. Let me ask Kenyans, those that are watching. How much darkness is in this country of ours? How much darkness? And the light shines in darkness. How much, if you're a believer, how, how much are you shining in our political darkness? I always say we are praying, but what else? How much are we shining on the political arena? And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. What happens here in our country in Kenya when a believer has gone into politics and has gone into parliament? The light gets zimward. They sing the song of the other guys that are singing. So I keep, I, I, I wonder why. One of the problems we have as Kenyans is we are not rooted in the word. And that's why it's not many people that are going to be studying this. So most of us want the excitement. We don't want to know how to learn and how to walk in our Christian faith. The light shines in darkness and the darkness does not comprehend it. I will not begin the next verse because it talks about John. There was a man sent from God whose name was, I'll come to that. I'll come to that in our, in our next study. But let's, 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 let's go through it. The, the four synoptic gospel writers were very different and especially John. John is very different. He's writing to all people. And he's not just writing a story. He's very selective. We'll see that. The miracles he selects, he selects seven miracles. They reveal something. And this is a book to really study and do hermeneutics. Biblical interpretation is hermeneutics. Study words and their meaning. They are very, very, very powerful. John has four themes. He has the theme of Christ, the theme of salvation, and if you are writing right, the theme of salvation, the theme of the Holy Spirit, and the theme of his second coming. Four themes. So four themes are clear in the gospel of John. So we need to study about Christ. These are written. And the theme of John is John chapter 20 verse 30 and 31. What does it say? And many other signs did Jesus do in the midst of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe, I believe, I believe. 
Believe appears 98 times in the Gospel of John. Wow. Christ means Messiah, the anointed one. The anointed one. He was anointed by God. Who went about in many places. He was doing good. You're a believer. You're out there. Do you have that light? Is that light practical? Are you, ally, are you allowing darkness creep into your home? That light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. Are you shining in your family? Are there members of your family that need to experience this light? And they are with you there. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Reach out. And if you have anything that you can do, number one is to witness. Of course, there is the living. They need to see your, your life. I said the boarding schools are detention camps for our children. Hmm. And I know, I know husbands are working. I know mothers are working. So who will remain with the children? Dump them into our detention boarding school. The italics are mine. Just calling them like that so that you feel bad. They're bad. Let me pray for you wherever you are, whatever need you, are, you have, whatever challenge you're, you're going through. Let me pray for you uh, today in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to pray for every uh, viewer that is watching this program from their home. And they are having challenges. Some have no food. We pray that you provide unto them. Some are anxious. I pray that you calm those, that anxiety. Some are sick. Lord, I pray that you will heal them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, uh, recover them, Lord. Bring them back in good health. Father, I pray that you heal the people around the globe that are dying from the coronavirus. We pray that they, you will heal them and they will worship you and they will serve you. Father, we pray that our economies will swing back into, into growth and action, Lord. We pray that our people will come back, Lord, in serving you. We bless you. We worship you. And Lord, those that are not saved and they're watching this, I pray that you will to reach them, that they will get saved. They will give their life to you by believing in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, save them. Lord, forgive them. Lord, write their names in the book of life. And let them be your children. And enjoy walking and enjoying this life of God, Zoe. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.